All right, let's go over this problem first. Uh, here we're supposed to find all the zeros. Uh, you'll recognize in this problem. Let's count the number of terms. Count with me. Ready, set, go. One, two, three, four, five. Can you use Xbox? No. So, can you use factoring by grouping? No. You can only use factoring by grouping if it's four terms. Okay. Another way of saying find the zeros is also solve. So we're going to have to set this equal to zero. So we're going to have to use the rational roots theorem. This is your p-value. The one is your q-value. So p divided by q. Let's get of all of our combinations. Uh, it's just a uh, absolute value because it's both plus and minus. So what are the factors of 36? Nine? And your key value is just one. And what number did you guys pick? Try. Negative what? Let's try it. So my coefficients are one, nine, twenty-three, three, and negative thirty-six. Bring it down, you got a 1, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, and I get a remainder 0. This means that this is a factor. Specifically what that means is that you have x, what would you put in here? x plus 3. And then all of this, what are you going to get? Start here. Negative 12, 5x plus, right, because 5 is positive, 6x squared and x cubed. Okay, can you, we have four terms now. Can we do factoring by grouping? You can? You can't pull out a greatest common factor here, right? So what that means is, in yellow here, you are basically doing a rational roots theorem again. So this is your um, p-value is 12, divided by q-value, which is 1. So your la uh, last term, your factors are going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12 all over 1. What number do you want to pick? 2? Alright, let's try 2. Now I'm going to use 1, 6, 5, and negative 12. Bring this down. Multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, 42. And that gives me 30. Didn't work. So no, not a factor by the factor theorem, right? Say again? What number are you guys going to try now? One? Let's try one. One, seven, seven, twelve, twelve, zero. Yay! So this means this one is a factor, right? So let's go back up here. We have x plus three. X what? x minus 1 and then I still have these three. What am I going to write here? 
x squared, 7x plus 12. Now what can we do with this one? x box, it's a trinomial. What's half of 2? 1. So now you're just going to use your x. So a times c is 12. My b value is 7. What are my two numbers, class? 4 and 3. So my answer is x plus 3, x minus 1, x plus 4, and x plus 3. Let's clean that up a little bit. So all my equal signs. How many x plus 3's do we have? Then x minus 1, and then x plus 4. Okay? All right. This one, if the direction's up there, it said factor completely, then we would be done. But what does it tell us? Find the zeros. So another way of saying find the zeros means solve. Another word for solve you've learned for the past couple of years in secondary math is to get x, x equals. Do we have x equals numbers? Not yet, so let's do that. I have x plus 4 equals 0 x minus 1 equals 0. Now you can write this twice or just remember it. And then we here we get x equals what? Negative 3. x equals 1. x equals negative 4. Okay. Now, how many times do we have x equals negative 3? How many? Twice. So we call that a multiplicity of 2. 1 and negative 4. And this is my answer. These are my zeros of my polynomial function. I had to use rational roots theorem. Let's, let's summarize a big idea. All of this in the beginning, if you had to use one word, what one word would you use? What are you doing in all this yellow area? A lot of work. We are factoring. So in all of this area here, above the zero product rule, we are factoring. Okay, from this part right here now, if that was down here, what are we doing in the last part of the problem? We are solving. Let's write that. And another word for a fancy word of solving is finding the zeros. And then you can use this problem to go ahead and graph, right, by multiplicity.